Hey Wig Hacker, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going over all the different types of wig blocks. Holy cow, there's so many. Stay tuned. <music> Hey wig hackers, so the blocks, this goes by preference first and foremost, you know as much as I know what we can create with what we have. So we're going to start off with the one that everyone seems to have and actually work on our styrofoam heads. So it's not that they're bad, they're just not accurate for sizing. You know, unless you do have a client that has a very small head, you really can't get the perfect precision form that you need. So they are great for high quality volume. So if you need to have like 10 or 20 wigs made and have them stored somewhere, if it's for a production, for a show, or just to house your wigs, you know, that is totally doable. Um, you can also coat them. You can dip them in a polyurethane and use that as a bubble if you need to. You can pat it out with your tape, however you pat out your block. You can try, it does work. Um, I had a smaller client and Phoebe, my assistant, patted it out so beautifully and it's worked so well to create that wig. Next one we have is the ones you can buy on Amazon. They are the, the hard foam covered with the um, canvas. Blah! Hard as anything to get your pins in. So it is another option. I'm not sure. I haven't found one that works beautifully, but they do work. You can use them. They do come in different sizes. Make sure you get the right size. Size does matter. It really does. It can help you make a better fit for your client so they keep coming back again and again. And then we have wooden blocks. Yep. These are made out of um, so they're mostly a cedar wood so that they can be, they're not so heavy, but they are heavy though. Uh, they do come in every size. They are a lot, um, used a lot for hat making. So they do use them for wig making. That is a very perfect fit craft. I won't use them. Uh, I have to use a hammer to put pins in. None of my life. So it is something that you want. Um, if you want to be that shishi frou frou wig maker, absolutely try to work with them. Good luck. I would love to see your process. Tag me below. Or you can just have one to put on your shelf. Those are, they're non-giving. They're non-flexible. They are what they are. You have to take your measurements precisely. You need to make sure that you create the perfect bubble and have those numbers be on point. Otherwise, you're gonna wanna scream. This one is more for the advanced wig maker, so I don't really suggest it. They do look pretty if you buff them enough or if they're old enough, but it is another option that you can have. Not the top on my list though. Then we have the ones that I love. The canvas blocks that are filled with either cork or sawdust. So those are the two things, um, two components that they do make them out of. If you did get your ventilating kit from me, you did come with a size 22 wig head that has it made. They're made actually in the USA, in Florida, by a lady named Arlene. She makes them just for me. Um, and so they're in our kit, they're handmade. So yes, they do look like a light bulb, but you can get them in any size. So I work really well with her so she can create them, make them, and truthfully, so I can break them. It has been a pleasure working with her and we're going to do it from ever and ever and ever. So this is the one that you can pat out, you can completely block it, but you need to plasticize your wig blocks. From the day you get them, that bag it comes in, use it as your first time plasticizing. So you can learn how to plasticize a block in another video I have at danielcoyeducation.com slash offer. And you can actually keep layering it again and again. Every time you wash your wig that you've made by hand and it's fully ventilated, you're going to want to wash it on a block. So this is where some people get a little confused. You have to wash it on a block, otherwise the hair will be inverted. 
and then it, it, why bother? So you need to put another layer on top of the layer you already did without putting any holes from your pins in it until you are ready to actually block it down. It actually creates like a seal around it when you're blocking your wig in so, so you can dunk it underneath your thing. So just be careful. Um, or you can do like another person does. They actually have one block that is made for it. It's in the sink. It lives there. It's uh, always used every day. So that could also be another thing you can try as well if you have a spare block to do it with. Um, so those are all the blocks that are on the market. Which one is your favorite? I'm just not sure you have the right one. Maybe you need to upgrade your tools. Maybe you need to start working smarter, not harder, so you can be getting more profits and more flexibility in your life. So thank you for watching. And if you have a comment, leave it below, because I always answer. You already knew that, though. And click subscribe and the bell. You got to hit the bell so you know when I post something so that you can learn as much as you can for as little as possible so we can help you become a better wig maker. So from your number one cheerleading wig maker, Daniel Toots.